In this tutorial we're going to explore the concept of love in the play Othello. And I wanted to start by framing this question. And of course when we're talking about a play, because it's a complete text, we underline it. So the question I'm going to ask is, is Othello a happy story of romantic love turned tragedy, or is there more to it? And that's really what we have to come up with, uh, you know, we have to come up with a, a uh, response to that. When we think about the concept of love, and we think about words that are associated with love, we can think of um, things like romance and dedication and duty and relationships. Romance and relationships are things that we can um, certainly tie together and assume that they are interconnected. So, um, and, and when we are going to write an essay, and we're focusing on this concept of love, that would be the notion of the idea so we're going to have, in any essay we write, we're going to have ideas. We're going to talk about uh, context. We're going to try and marry the ideas to the context of the 1600s. And it might be something about a value or just something that's occurring um, or something that's evident in the 1600s. The question is asking us about how it endures and why it's still relevant today. So the context is sort of twofold. You're talking about when it f was first uh, written and performed, but also why it endures, why it's still relevant today. And then the third thing we're going to talk about are dramatic techniques. And this um, dramatic techniques are different to um, literary techniques. So um, we don't want to be talking about similes as such, um, personification, things like that. We really want to talk about the dramatic techniques, the techniques of um, um, Shakespeare and tragedy. So we will be thinking about things like soliloquies and mo monologues and dramatic irony. We might use terms like hamartia and hubris, uh, those type of things, catharsis, all those sort of um, devices or dramatic techniques are the things that we want to, to explore. So we might have quotes and it might have a simile in there and that's great, but can we look for a a bigger device to to um, to integrate into that. What we're going to do is we're going to talk about the different types of loves. Um, there's many different ways that we can approach this concept of love and um, in your response what you want to do is pick one, uh, probably two, maximum of three um, types of approaches. Two's uh, I think plenty and what that will do is it will allow you to um, develop an argument. You might find that one's enough because you want to have one sort of focus and then see how you can tease that out and talk about um, different um, things under that umbrella. So one thing that we could talk about is this notion of romantic love. And when we explore that in the play, we could look at the characters of Othello and Desdemona and we can think about how that their love is built in the private world. So the public Othello, you know, when he's in the public world, he's a general, he's a very um, successful military um, soldier, he's, he's very skilled and very strong and confident in that world, but here we have him placed in a private world and, and we through the through the play we get to see the the, um, the other side of the fellow, um, the insecure, um, the, the, the man that lacks confidence and the, the naive and innocent um, man. And we can certainly um, examine their, their courtship and, and look at what actually formed the bond of their relationship. We know that their marriage was um, reasonably, uh, re reasonably quick after they met. Um, and that, you know, we can, if you look at that start of the play and there's a couple lovely monologues from Desdemona and Othello when they're talking to the Duke, um, where they talk about uh, what, what attracted them to each other. And that's when we start to look for quotes, you know, Othello said that she loved me for the pains that I'd suffered and I loved her that she did pity them. And you think, well, is that a really strong foundation for a... Um, for a, a marriage and and so you could you could explore that and that would be a nice thing to look at. Iago was talking about the fact that they their romance and their marriage was built on lust and that um, that you know um, that that 
he says to to Rodrigo that you know very soon their appetites will wane and that they'll grow tired of each other and then that will be a great time for for Rodrigo to to actually um, then be able to become romantically involved with Desdemona. It's not to think, well, is Iago wrong in saying that? Is their relationship built on what's required for a long-lasting love that's going to live happily ever after? Or was it, was it destined for failure from the beginning because of these types of things? Another thing we could look at once they're married, and obviously um, as they were courting, is this the, the, um, the balance in their relationship. Was it equal? And we can explore this notion of the, the patriarchal society and the, the roles that the, the two characters play within that. So um, um, when you look at Desdemona, she's very young and um, innocent um, and she's very dutiful. Uh, even right at the very end, she blames... She doesn't blame Othello for, for the, um, the situation. She, she's more um, um, you know, um, dutiful to him and believes that he wasn't to blame. And then when we look at Othello, are we, can we say that he's overly possessive? Is he too obsessive um, uh, in his um, you know, love for Desdemona? Is there no flexibility and no sort of... Um, foresight or trust in that relationship is his relationship abusive as a result of that so um, when we start to look at that so well is their love um, and their romance their marriage um, is it is it problematic because of the extremities of their um, their personalities and their experience Othello and Desdemona are both very innocent and um, they're very unworldly when it comes to love and as a result of that their extreme actions um, and their extreme ideas cause cause the problem and so that might be something you could argue that well it really wasn't Iago's fault he just facilitated that it was bound to happen anyway an interesting idea to look at you could look at other characters as well um, for romantic love. So that will give you a bit of an idea of some of the things you could do if you wanted to go down that path. There's plenty to argue there, that's for sure. Then over here we've got um, this idea of love of the country, this um, patriotic uh, pride, and this notion of duty and service. And when we think about the start of the play and the premise of the play, when we look at Iago, is that the Duke has picked a fellow as general because it was the fashionable sort of trendy thing to do um, whereas Iago had given excellent service to the Venetian state and he'd worked his way up the ranks um, and because of that um, he feels wrong he, he feels hard done by and a fellow does the same thing by promoting Cassio above him and and so because of this um, notion of duty and service and Iago decides that um, that because the system has failed him he's going to seek revenge you know and and we can look at that and say well is that is that uh, wrong you know is is he justified in his actions and we can look at the character of Iago and say well you know would he behave differently had he been given the position of general or the position of ancient um, and so we can look at human behaviour. Is, is his, um, is, is his um, actions of revenge uh, and the manner in which he treats people, is that a result of the way he's been treated or is it inherently within him? So is, is, he, um, is he this type of character anyway, but the opportunity arose for him to, um, to behave in that manner? Um, or is it inborn within him? We can look at this notion of um, racial superiority. The play is set in Venice, so if we think European, um, you know, that, and you know, we can we can tie the uh, English um, culture to that as well. That the Europeans viewed themselves as superior to the rest of the countries in the world. And that was built on the back of colonialism and imperialism. Though everyone was jumping in boats and sailing around the world 
discovering new lands and conquering them. And, and so Othello is deemed as another, as an outsider, and his difference really um, is evident in the play, and, and that's brought to the, the fore. So we could say, we could look and argue that, that um, the, the romance and the love that um, Othello and Desdemona had was never going to work because of their racial difference and because of the, the um, attitudes towards African Moors in, in the world and, and because he, he didn't fit in and he was an outsider that that, that was problematic and therefore it wasn't Iago, um, you know, that, that he was just once again um, an opportunist. We can look at racial difference and it's the difference between um, Othello's upbringing and his world experience and Desdemona's um, uh, upbringing as well that means that their love is fragile and the way in which the uh, you know people treat them and the way they treat each other and the, the, the way they think that um, that causes the, um, the the tragedy to occur. Another approach you could take is this notion of the love of oneself and we're going to focus on Iago but you could say, is that the case with all men in the play? Or is it all men and all women? Is it just an individual pursuit that that dominates um, anything larger than that? Um, but if we look at this notion of the desire of power, that, that individuals, because they love themselves, um, they, they desire power and they'll do anything to, to get that. And so when we look at Iago, he comes to that point where he will ruin anybody else's... Um, lives um, as a means to get his own way you know so he'll seek advantage by ruining others and he understands too that, that in the play that love is a tool that he can use to manipulate others and we have to ask the question with Iago does he gain pleasure from um, from the m means by which he manipulates others to get what he wants um, and is that why he, he, is that his motivation really, that the, the, the simple um, self-love that he has is the thing that, that drives him forward. So we have to ask the question, is he narcissistic or is he a realist? Is he preoccupied with his, himself at the expense of everybody else or is he more of a realist? And there was that idea that um, um, which was better, civilised man or savage man? the noble savage, and um, that's who um, Othello is meant to represent. And so, because the civilised world had let Iago down, he decides to, to go down that other path, you know, the survival of the fittest, the strongest, the smartest. Um, and, and so, um, because the civilised world has fa um, failed him, he rejects love, he rejects um, God and all the Christian values. So that would be an interesting thing to look at, that, um, that, that uh, it wasn't Othello and Desdemona's love that was the problem. Um, it, it was more Othello's bad decision of, of promoting Cassio over him. And that maybe that was because Othello's love of himself meant that he didn't follow the customs um, and the, the tradition of, um, of, of the, the military and he's promoted someone above above Iago. Um, so that's an interesting idea to, to explore too. Another thing we can look at, and for want of a better term I've called it masculine love, <clears throat> they're living in a patriarchal society and everything, the order of the world is, is governed by um, this notion of patriarchy. And so we can say that men are fixated with power, they love power and, and it fuels their egos and it's something that that um, you know motivates them to to, to seek power, and it, it gives them a sense of purpose and and um, understanding and belonging when they have power. <clears throat> Othello is in a position of power, and he's too strong. He's too proud to admit that he is um, he has a weakness, and he doesn't understand women, and he doesn't understand civilized society. And that causes him a, a, a fair sense of problem. <coughs> when we look at the final um, monologue, I've written soliloquy there, but he's talking to the others. 
when when he writes when he speaks that monologue and he um, he says speak of me a one who loved not wisely but too well he is totally focused on restoring his reputation and maintaining that and it's all inward he's focused on himself and he's not too concerned about what's happened to Desdemona um, doesn't mention her at all he, he's upset but it's more um, because uh, Iago has done this to him more so than than the the tragic um, implications that has on Desdemona and so that makes us look at this notion of chauvinism um, or the, you know the this masculine world and because they're all soldiers and they spend a lot of time together without females and so um, perhaps they love the company of men more than they love women the company of women and maybe that's built into the social fabric so that when they are around women they um, have a, a different relationship with them so it's not so much a, a loving relationship it's more um, using women for particular things. So in wartime, it's obviously as a, a sexual um, thing, but in, in marriage, maybe the, um, the function of having a, a wife is to, to raise more sons and keep that, that, um, that the, the bloodline going. So that's an interesting thing to, to look at. And when you look at Iago and the way that he treats women and that he speaks of women. He's very derogatory and um, very gross in the way in which he talks. Othello doesn't do that, um, but he still falls into the same sort of um, thinking that um, it's a man's world. Politics and the arm, the military life is a man's world and women have their place, but it's, it's over to the side. Um, even Cassio when he's um, speaking about Bianca, um, we, we do see that he has no intention of marrying her and uh, so their relationship's not really built on love, it's more of a, a practical um, arrangement for him. And, and Bianca understands that and uses it for her advantage as well. Another reading we can have is this um, idea of um, the question that pops up is Iago in love with Othello? And, you know, does he sort of think, well, if if I can't have Othello to myself, well, no one can have him. So is that his motivation for, for destroying Desdemona and, and Othello as well? So it's interesting when we think about that because he's talking about jealousy as the green-eyed monster and maybe it applies to him as well, that, that he's driven by his own jealousy um, and that leads to the tragedy. So regardless of the fate, uh, you know, um, you could agree with that statement and say, well, Iago is the, is the demi-devil because he's of his um, love of himself and um, his notion of masculine love. There's no place for, for a um, successful marriage between Othello and Desdemona. So that's another, another thing that we can look at. I meant to put a little line around here because there is a place for this <coughs> idea of um, the love of the father and daughter and we see that through Brabantio and Desdemona uh, at the start of the play <clears throat> and um, you know it's built on this notion of duty and responsibility and um, Desdemona is meant to um, be dutiful to her father and um, when we think about uh, relationships and love and marriage um, <clears throat> Uh, you know, Rodrigo had proposed many a time and asked um, Brabantio for Desdemona's hand and he'd refused her. Uh, but um, Desdemona runs off with, with Othello. And that's a real slight on, on uh, Brabantio's social standing because of that marriage arrangement. You know, it, you know asked the, the father being able to determine who, would, who he'd marry his daughter off to was a real reflection of him in society. So he, because he'd been slighted, he he um, he wipes his hands of Desdemona, and he foreshadows the tragedy, doesn't he, by saying, "Beware, um, you know, she's deceived her father and may thee." So that's an interesting look, um, something to look at. And when we talk about responsibilities, because they've eloped that upsets the balance of the universe and causes the, the problem. So it was doomed for failure because they eloped. 
um, that was the problem. They didn't follow the the um, the, the functions, the rights, the, the rules, the society, the patriarchal society, and the Christian society, and that led to the tragic demise. It wasn't it wasn't anything but it wasn't to do with the yoga. It was more that they hadn't they hadn't um, developed you know they hadn't followed the Christian order um, as a way of of um, developing their or um, consolidating their, their love and as a result it was doomed for failure. So maybe it was divine justice that that, that um, they were punished because they weren't um, uh, living up to their Christian values. Now in the mix of all this we've got ideas of jealousy, morality, power, ego, revenge, racism, responsibility. There are lots and lots of things to interweave and we, you know we've been talking about all these things in class and so when it's appropriate some of these things might be developed into your argument. Finally we'll just have a quick look at each of the characters views on love and, you know they're all different in their approach. So Othello is very obsessive and very extreme it's all or nothing with him. So that's bound um, that's due to his naivety and his experience in in matters of love that he has this really strong um, view. He says down here, um, when I love her not, chaos is come again. So he's basically saying, if I don't love her anymore, all hell's going to break loose. You know, So it's a very extreme uh, approach. Desdemona is very dutiful in her love. She's bound um, and, and very extreme in her um, duty towards her husband. She fulfills her role very well. And once again, that um, is due to her innocence and lack of experience in the world of love. Um, and so it's interesting that they're both inexperienced, but their approaches, um, and the, their approaches are both very extreme, but they're both very different um, in, in what they do. And that could be a gender thing, you know, it's about power, and here it's about um, that passivity and, um, you know, fulfilling the, the patriarchal order. Iago views love as a tool to manipulate others. He sees that that, that is something that <clears throat> creates weakness in individuals. He also views women as foolish and they're there to do his bidding. Um, you know, he gets Amelia to steal the handkerchief and um, there are means to an end rather than um, being, um, you know, someone that you would form a, a romantic relationship with. Speaking of romance, Rodrigo is said to be like a Petrarchan lover. He's very melodramatic. He's very extreme in his ideas as well, and they're very unrealistic, um, you know, and, and it's all overblown, and um, he should be more practical about it, that Desdemona won't be um, a suitable partner for him, but he, he can't let that go. And he's e easily manipulated by Iago. Amelia is very worldly in her view on love. She understands um, men and, and what they're, they're interested in, what their desires are, that being essentially power. Um, and, and so her view is, a, is very um, practical and, and you know, based on experience. Bianca is very practical in her view of love. She knows, I think she knows, that she'll never marry Cassia, but she's going to use her body to um, gain... Um, her own advantage. So she's going to get as much out of the relationship as she can, um, in in a in a, a sense because uh, they'll never because they're from different social classes they'll never they'll never marry, and so their love will be can be restricted because of that. Iago says, um, you know, in that true manipulation, you know, I love you to to Othello. He says that, you know, and everyone calls him Honest Iago, so um, there's lots to play around with that. And we know at the end, he, a fellow said, think of me of one has one that um, loved not wisely but too well. Uh, and so there's a lot of um, good ideas to, to explore in there. Certainly the quotes you're going to use don't have to have love in them at all. You know, there's um, all sorts of things that you can explore, whether it be about jealousy or power or... Um, you know, you're building, you're building um, an understanding of the character and their motivation or their relationships, those type of things. There's lots to talk about, lots of different quotes to use to, to illustrate the argument that you're making. Anyway, that should give you plenty of food for thought. 
Now all you have to do is pick something that, that you're drawn to and that you think, oh, I'd like to explore that in depth and then start working on um, building your argument for that.